Welcome guys to the episode. I'm in a nature reserve and I'm uh, just trying out the 400 millimeter Canon EFL lens that I bought a month ago. And I'm starting to get some really nice shots with it now. I've learnt how to stabilize my shooting platform. That sounds a bit militaristic. I've learned how to stay wobble free and uh, I'm getting some finely sharp shots uh, that I'm really happy with. And I've been taking a lot of bird photos today, a lot of wading birds and a lot of uh, heron shots, like a great white heron, I think that's what it's called. So I'm just out here in the fresh air, there's plenty of that around today, it's pretty windy. And um, I'm just going to do a Q&A with you guys, but before I do that, I've uh, got a confession to make. I've been a bit burnt out lately. And I think it's to do with uh, just being flat out at work and uh, having a family and uh, organising uh, things with the family and also trying to maintain a stock portfolio, a uh, stock photography and videography portfolio and also be a world famous YouTuber that I am. That's right. And uh, it's just been too much. I've just, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been burnt out before, but uh, I guess that's what I'm feeling at the moment because um, I just don't have really the energy and uh, all the ability to really care. Uh, so that's what I recognize as myself. It's time to have a break and have a rest. I love doing it all though. I mean, I like my job. Uh, I love doing YouTube videos and I love uh, uploading and well, especially photographing and videoing for the stock agencies. I guess the last straw was the uh, shitstorm that's been going on with Shutterstock over the last two or three months. That kind of uh, really made it difficult to motivate myself. I, I think there's a lot of uh, stock shooters in that boat actually that have probably found it really hard to get out, take those 10 cent shots, spend the time to upload them, and keyword them only to be rejected for something like out of focus or uh, wrong keywords or some annoying thing like that. So it's been tough. Anyway, I've got my shit together and I'm out here now and we're going to do a Q&A. Just one second. Got it. We're going to do a Q&A. I'll just put my camera down because it's hard to adjust the composition and the exposure with that in my hand. And my first question is um, regarding my second best-selling photo and that's of the old Italian men. I always get this question whether that's a editorial shot or a commercial shot and uh, the old Italian gentleman uh, sitting in a square and they're all chatting together amicably and in my last video I talked about how that earned me a lot of money, well by my standards anyway. And that shot is editorial. Um, I did a bit of research before I published that or allowed it to go on the stock agencies and my research told me that uh, I could uh, upload that as a, an editorial photo based on uh, the laws in Italy. I'm not a lawyer and I am prone to making mistakes so don't follow my example. Find out for yourself whether uh, the laws where you take the photo allow you to do that. Um, in the Netherlands I know 100% that if you don't have uh, permission from the person to take, uh, to publish the shot, uh, there is a chance that uh, you'll have legal action taken against you. I know, well I don't know, I believe in England and the US uh, that it's a whole different ball game that you can take people in public areas, take photos of people in public areas 
and upload them as editorial. That's what I've heard, but don't take my word for it. Find out for yourself. Uh, so I'd love to uh, have those rules over here in Europe because uh, it can be pretty tricky and limiting as well because I just loved going out and taking photos of people, especially on the beach when they're doing their Nordic walking. Um, before the rules changed, I used to take a lot of those photos and they earned me quite a good amount of money. I can't even show you these photos on this because uh, it's against the privacy laws in the Netherlands. Um, yeah, so that photo was uh, editorial. <laughs> the next question is about one of the videos I made uh, regarding the Shutterstock kerfuffle uh, a month or so ago. And I think I was talking about that I was losing income. And one of uh, the uh, viewers made a comment, um, couldn't I make the same amount of money by doing YouTube videos? And the, an the long answer is eventually probably yes, uh, but the short term answer is definitely no. I think you need uh, 1,000 subscribers and uh, 4,000 viewing hours uh, of people watching before you even get a chance to monetize your channel. And that has to be within a 12 month period. And I know a lot of YouTubers can take up to two or three years before they have enough uh, subscribers or viewing hours to monetize their channel. I am so far around 770 subscribers, I think. And I've got about 3,500 viewing hours. So I'm still a ways off. And I'm not even sure that I will get there within the 12 month period. So my aim, I guess, is within two years of doing videos every week, that I'll finally get the chance to monetize my videos. But it's going to take uh, at least another six months. And even when you monetize your channel, there's no guarantee that you will earn uh, a lot of money, especially perhaps the level of money I was earning with uh, um, stock photography and videography. I can see from this month's earnings, it's starting to come up again. So that's uh, a good sign. Uh, but uh, YouTube replacing stock photography, not in the short term. My next question is, will I consider doing a how to stop motion video? And my answer is yes. I've never done a stop motion uh, clip before, so it sounds pretty interesting to me as well. So I'm gonna give that a go. thing I love about the Netherlands is the skies. I mean, just with those white fluffy clouds rolling by, if you get a good day, you've got the beautiful white contrast with the uh, bright blue sky in between. It's just like an oil painting and really good for doing time lapses. The hour that it took me to do a couple of time lapses on this path, I saw quite a bit of wildlife actually. I saw a couple of birds of prey fly over too high to photograph with uh, to photograph unfortunately and I saw this massive uh, locust or a, a, it was either a, a big green locust or a cricket I have a feeling it might have been a cricket anyway I swapped lenses and I put the 17 to 50 semi macro on uh, so I hope I got some good shots of that and this path that runs through is also a bit of a highway for frogs and uh, toads as well. I managed to get some rapid or uh, rushed shots of some toads and some frogs as they uh, jumped over the path to get to the other side. So uh, yeah, it was quite interesting just waiting for those time lapses to go. Anyway, back to the Q&A. The next question is, 
um, what camera do I use for my stock photography? And the answer is uh, I use this camera which is my Canon 70D and I've had this for about uh, a year and a half now. I used to have a Canon 60D and that served me really well for over 10 years almost, roughly 10 years. And uh, it broke it down a couple of times and I kept getting it repaired. And after the fourth time, uh, the card holder for the SD card stopped working. I said, that's enough. And uh, I bought a, another camera to replace it. Mind you, the 60D is still used as a prop for my stock photography. And the 70D is a, a better camera. Another question is about uh, my stock photography workflow and whether I shoot JPEG or RAW, what my storage is and uh, whether I separate my uh, stock photos from other photos that I take. And the answer is yes I do. <laughs> but first of all I'll go into the JPEG RAW thing. Um, usually I shoot RAW uh, I've found uh, that especially uh, shooting subjects at a long distance, uh, I've found the JPEGs can be quite soft. Uh, so I switch to RAW mode when I'm shooting stuff with my 70 to 200 at 135 or my 400. And that just allows me to get more detail out of the, uh, the photos. I do sometimes shoot JPEG when I'm running low on my card. Uh, if my card is three quarters full and I'm out for the day and I don't have a backup card, uh, if I switch it to JPEG, that means I get up to three or four times the amount of photos out of it. But I just have to be really careful to watch my exposure and try and get as close as possible. Uh, because, yeah, the difference in quality can be uh, seen, especially on the 70D crop sensor, which is uh, not exactly a low light beast or a dynamic range beast. Um, what I use for my storage is Western Digital external hard drives. Um, I've got a number of them in ranging between 2 terabyte and 4 terabyte, and they have never failed on me unless I drop them from a great height on the floor, which I've done a couple of times. Uh, then they do fail. They just don't work anymore. But these uh, Western Digital hard drives that I've been using, um, I could recommend them from my experience. Uh, they're just really good. They're reliable and they're not too expensive. They're not going to break your bank either. So you can get a like a four terabyte uh, hard disk from Western Digital and uh, it'll take you ages to fill that up. Uh, I do recommend you back that up with another one just so you in case you do drop it on the floor like I did that you do have backup uh, for your videos and shots. And my workflow uh, with uh, stock photography and videography pretty much revolves around uh, Lightroom and Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, once I've exported the photo or the video from those uh, software uh, programs, I export them into a dedicated stock photography and videography folder. The wind's making my eyes water a bit. And they're just dedicated folders and I have a backup on another external hard drive with those files as well. Um, I keep them separate from uh, family photos for example and other jobs such as portrait photos or um, group shots for work um, so I know exactly where to go so that's my workflow Okay, my next question is uh, what kind of uh, photos and videos do I choose to upload to different websites and can you upload the same uh, images and videos 
two different websites. Some stock agencies take different types of images. For example, Adobe Stock, unless you have a certain amount of images and videos on their uh, agency, you are only allowed to upload commercial content to them, uh, videos and images. Uh, th and that's the case for me. I am only allowed to upload uh, commercial videos and uh, photos to Adobe. Uh, Canstock is the same. Um, and uh, I also use that principle for IEM. Um, I don't generally upload editorial type uh, content to IEM. Uh, usually I just uh, upload commercial stuff and stuff that doesn't need a model release form. Uh, I keep it really simple on that agency. Um, whereas uh, Shutterstock, iStock, uh, Dreamstime, you can generally upload editorial and commercial photos and also editorial and commercial videos. Uh, for iStock, you are only allowed to upload commercial videos. Uh, what else? Uh, Alamy, you're only allowed to upload uh, photos. I'm not able to upload any videos to that website. And the question, can you upload your content, uh, the same content to different agencies? Uh, the answer is yes, but it depends. You have to be a non-exclusive contributor with that agency. And this was unclear to me uh, when I was first getting started because when I studied the uh, agencies, it was really uh, hard to find the information about whether uh, you could send them uh, your photos and then send photos to other agencies. Um, eventually, I just sent them an email or a, a, a question in their website template and they got back to me pretty quick saying, yes, if you're not an exclusive uh, contributor, you can upload uh, your videos and photos to other websites. Uh, you have to be careful with some agencies, um, with Shutterstock, Dreamstime, iStock, uh, Alamy, uh, and a few others. If you're non-exclusive, you can send it to other agencies. But I think some of the high-end agencies, uh, they have different rules for that. So if you're unsure, just contact the agency like I did and ask them the question directly. It's better to be safe than sorry. Another question I get, I'm not sure if it's from uh, Black Box employees or people who are sponsored by Black Box, but um, I get asked why don't I contribute to black box and primarily I think it's just because I like to keep uh, things really low budget and the commission rates I get for photos and videos are already low uh, so I used to not mind doing the extra work just so that I could keep the uh, highest amount of reward as possible for each sale and I don't know a lot about black box but I think they charge you a certain commission from every sale you have uh, so that they can uh, distribute the uh, stock photos and videos for you. Um, yeah so things have probably changed a little bit for me because I am so under the pump at the moment you know juggling all of these balls work children uh, stock agency and YouTube so in the future I may consider it uh, I just have to look at it more closely to see how much of a chunk they're going to take out of it and whether the uh, sales rates are higher or lower especially with the changes in the stock agency market that have taken place over the last three months so uh, previously I didn't want to give them any money to do my work for me because I was happy to do the work. Now that's changed a bit because I'm busier than ever. Um, so I'll be looking into it. Uh, 
yeah, it's more of a, a to be continued uh, story for that one. Another question I got from uh, Kitty Cat in the comments was, what are my opinions about DSLRs versus mirrorless cameras? And I think for uh, stock photography and videography, um, they're both uh, quite good. They're both usable for that purpose if the price is right. Um, if I'm going to buy a new camera, uh, I, first of all, I want to know that uh, I can afford it. Um, and I think the mirrorless uh, systems now are reliable enough to, especially for stock content, to take excellent photos and especially video. Um, for sports and wildlife, I'm not so sure, but when you look at cameras such as the Sony A9 or uh, A7R, well, the A7IV-R, <laughs> the one that fires off those 60 megapixel uh, frames, uh, I've seen that used on wildlife and it looks pretty impressive. Um, but uh, yeah, so, and sport, I'm not so sure. I'm not a sports shooter, so I don't really know. Um, there's a couple of new Canons that have come out. I think the Canon R6 would have really interested me if it was a thousand euros cheaper. <laughs> and on the other hand, the uh, Canon RP also looks pretty interesting to me. Um, I don't need high frame rates. I don't need a second card slot. Uh, because I'm not going to be shooting weddings on it or other professional work. Uh, I think for stock, the RP would be perfectly fine with its full frame 26 megapixel sensor. Uh, and if you can get a, a 24 to 105 uh, kit lens with it, I think you're set. I think with the kit, it's uh, between 1,000 and 1,200 uh, euros, probably a bit more, but for a full for a full frame, blah, 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 for a full frame camera, uh, that's a good bargain, and especially a, a new mirrorless system with that autofocus system. Uh, the video they do is really good as well. So, yeah, I uh, I think mirrorless is the way of the future, and DSLRs will generally be phased out eventually. So it's just a matter of time. I've had a really great day walking around this nature reserve. Uh, it was a bit tough for me to start out on this video because I really had to force myself to actually leave the house today and just get out and take photos and videos. But like always, once I'm out here, I just feel free, I feel happy, uh, I feel alive. So it's great to get out and I'm really glad I could share this with you guys. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't done already and click on that bell notification and I really look forward to seeing you next time on YouTube. See you!